welcome to the arena. This is our weekly sports show where we bring you highlights of the weekend's sporting events at home and abroad. My name is Enoke Kaumba. Glad to be in your company, of course. And today we start off the show with Namibia's young, brilliant athletes, Beatrice Masilingi and Christine Boma, who were in fine form over the weekend, putting in some brilliant performances in Europe. Now, on Saturday, Mboma competed at an international meeting in the Spanish capital, Madrid, where she won the women's 200-meter track with a time of 22 minutes and 79 seconds, which is just off her national record of 22.67 seconds. Let's take a look at the race. Absolutely blessed here this evening. We should. Plenty of talent here. Women's 200 metres, final A. Four lines occupied here for our first final. Excellent start made here by Mboma. Best two A as well. Really has attacked that bend brilliantly. Plenty of aggression showed here going into the final 80 metres or so. But look how tight it is coming through in lane two. Suarez of Aquador as well has just been knocked off her perch here. Mboma as well from lane four. Took a firm stranglehold on that going into the back 50 metres. 22.79 there for Mboma. Just not for our season's best. Looked hard to want to do it going into that back 50, but Christine Mboma. Slightly unorthodox running style that she has, but it's effective. One iota does it, she's won, and that's all that counts. Brilliant performance there from Christine, but not to be outdone by Beatrice Masilingi tore up the track yesterday to win the women's four hundred meter at the Ijan. Nus Kosuo Sunki Memorial in Poland in a second fastest time ever of 49.89 seconds. Let's take a look at the race. Lined up in Europe. It will suffer tonight, however. I think Group C, without an iota of doubt, is easy the group of death. What an opportunity to go play the 22nd best ranked team in the world.
in Senegal and of course also facing the Kosafa six-time champion Zimbabwe notwithstanding the stern challenge that uh, Mozambique will provide. With uh, football being halted or rather with contact sports being halted in our country, this tournament provides an element of hope to our footballers and uh, you will agree with me that most of our professional base players, especially the ones based in South Africa, have been scouted at, uh, at Kosafa tournaments of the past. Uh, so as an FA, it is important for us to keep on creating these platforms an opportunity for our players to go do what they love and give them an opportunity to be scouted for them to sign professional contracts and improve their way of life. Uh, we are facing a uncharted waters with the, with the pandemic and all the challenges that the pandemic brings with respect to playing football and ensuring that the environment in which we operate is safe. So uh, we certainly will go to South Africa, put up our base there, and uh, we look forward to, to playing our first match. The coach of Mozambique, Herasio Gonzalez, also gave his thoughts on the group. Let's take a listen. Kosafa is very important for us. It's a good experience for our boys. Uh, we hope uh, a good tournament with uh, a group, a strong group, uh, good games. Uh, it's uh, an, another experience for our team. And uh, we have a, a good expectation about this tournament. Uh, we are strong too. We have a strong team on front, but uh, we go with... Uh, positive mentality for absorb this tournament. Good, to, good tournament, good games. We hope that. Now the other two groups consist of South Africa, Lesotho, Iswatini and Botswana in Group A. And Zambia, Malawi, Madagascar and the island of Comoros are in Group B. Now the former Bafana Bafana midfielder Dane Clayt was at the draw and he also gave his thoughts on the draw. Let's take a look. Very interesting draw, um, especially the Group B that has got Zambia. Zambia, they are the defending champions, um, but also there's uh, two surprise packages, Malawi and Comoros, the only team uh, in this group that are, uh, are going to the AFCON. Yeah, it's surprising, you know, big names is not going to be at AFCON, you know, smaller countries uh, are obviously as, as qualified which is obviously a shock, but it's, it just shows you how the game evolves, you know, and if, if whatever region, what, 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 whatever country, if the association has a proper plan in place and they implement that plan, you know, anything is possible in this game, you know, irrespective of what type of, type of, type of players you have or, or under par, you know, we always call them fishermen uh, of those countries, you know, but you know what, when they go out on that field, you know, they give their all and, and, and they play for their country, play for their badge, and, and, and that's why teams like that always end up uh, in the AFCON, you know, and it argues well going forward for them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but also to have um, a strong team like Senegal here, and uh, we know that Zimbabwe, there's a lot of players playing the DSTV Premiership. And but that Namibian team, um, for me, if they bring Shalile, they bring Hoto, they bring uh, some of their key players playing in the PSL, um, they should be one of the strongest teams here. Absolutely. Uh, that Group C is, I would call it the group of death in this Kosafa Cup. If I look at the names over there, Mozambique, you can't write off as well. On their day, they can beat any team, you know. Um, so I think for me, the most exciting group is definitely Group C uh, with Senegal in there, you know. Uh, I think obviously the other teams are, is used to playing Kosafa. It's going to be new for Senegal to play in the Kosafa Cup. So it'll be interesting to see what type of team they bring down uh, to, to play in the tournament, you know. And only then, once the teams get selected, the Senegals, the Zimbabwe's, the Namibias, like you're saying, you know, if we can see all those names that we are expecting to see, then I think it will be an exciting group to watch. On to some cycling news now. With some sports codes being put on hold because of the COVID-19 pandemic, one sport that is growing is the virtual racing sports where cyclists 
are competing in a virtual online competitions at home on their computers via an app. Now, the Simot Winter League is currently in full swing, with JP Berger having taken a commanding lead in the men's A division, while he beat an international field of riders in the first in the third leg of the series last week. Let's take a look. There's four Namibian racers in this group. We have Jacques Salia, we have JP Berger, we have Lester Mayer, and we have Brandon. So this is quite this would this is gonna be quite quite the finish. This is the last stretch. We actually see JP Berger absolutely breaking from the group. He is determined to make this <laughs> a really good finish. Let's see if anybody is going to be able to chase him. Nope, I don't think so. It's just the group, the group that he was in a few seconds ago. Let's see the, the kind of numbers he's putting out. 600 watts 600 watts stable okay let's quickly oh and they oh they almost caught him they all almost caught him well done and finally namibian boxing great paulus ali numbembe turns 43 on thursday here's a tribute by my colleague helga schutz one of Namibia's greatest boxers, Paulus Ali Numbembe, was born in Oshakati on 24 June 1978. Numbembe represented Namibia at the 2000 Olympics and the 2002 Commonwealth Games in Manchester, where he won a bronze medal in the welterweight category. In Manchester, he met boxing manager Chad Parker, who invited him to join him in England, where Ali started an impressive professional career under trainer Bob Shannon's guidance. He won his first nine fights in style, but suffered his first defeat in October 2004, when he returned to Namibia, but lost the national welterweight title on a split points decision to better world Tyson Ushona. Back in England, Numbembe racked up seven more wins and one defeat before he got a crack at the Commonwealth welterweight title and became the first Namibian to win the title when he beat Kevin Anderson of Scotland on a split decision in February 2007. In December, he lost the title to Craig Watson of England but returned to Namibia in 2008 when he beat Welka Michingila of South Africa to win the WBA Pan-African welterweight title. In 2009, he also won the WBO Africa welterweight title when he beat Samuel Malinga of South Africa on points. But in April 2010, he lost the title when he was knocked out by South Africa's Gerald Nekupfi and retired shortly after. After retirement, Ali went into training and is currently the coach of the Namibia Defence Force team where he is a staff officer in their sport division. Happy birthday, Ali, and all the best for the year ahead.